So tonight, um, we are going to be stepping back into our series on uh, web development. Mm. And uh, what I want to do is actually help you to be able to follow along uh, with, the, uh, with the show. If you go over to category5.tv, you can go to watch the show and features and tutorials. And within there, you're going to see our web development tutorial. Alternatively, real quick way to get there, cat 5 dot tv slash web dev for web development hit enter that's going to take you right to our web development series and this is going to actually can contain the entire series at one point once we're, once we're finished broadcasting it and you'll notice that uh, we've made available these files for you in order to actually participate in the uh, in the program or if you want to actually give some of the things that we're demoing a try, um, you'll be able to download those files. So uh, Krista has, uh, has very graciously said that, uh, that we can use the comp.psd. So feel free to download that if you'd like to take a look at uh, the file as we see it. Uh, it has been rendered, uh, the shadows have been rendered for uh, cross compatibility with the GIMP. Uh, so it will open in both uh, Photoshop and the GIMP just fine. Um, and then we have a new file. And this is blank index.zip which I'm just introducing this week. I'm going to open that up, and within that file, you'll see that there's an index.php. We're going to extract that to our website folder. There we go. And now here's our website folder with our images and an index.php. Index.html, index.php, whichever it is, is basically the the main, the first page that loads when someone goes to your website. That's like home, if you will, or it's the first, if they don't type in a file name, it's going to default to, uh, in most cases, uh, in most scenarios, it's going to default to an index.html, index.php, index.asp, if that's the uh, language that you're working in, things like that. So what the blank index.php is, is something that I've put together for you to simply save us time this evening because it is basically just a template, a mock-up, of a very basic um, website structure. So it contains our doc type at the top, it contains meta tags, it contains some um, robot tags for search engines, it contains an IE fix uh, for ping transparencies on anything under IE7, and then uh, all of the necessary codes in order to uh, basically create a website from this. So, so this is going to be our building block. This is going to be our, our kind of square one. And this is what we're going to build upon uh, over the next couple of shows and certainly tonight. So if you'd like to download that, um, you can feel free, cat5.tv slash webdev. So last week, you remember, Krista, we were looking at, uh, well, we finished up slicing the site. Mm -hmm. you've, got, uh, you've got the same files. And we ended up with this Polaroid file. And for me, this wound up being what I would say is too big for web, 167 kilobytes. And what did it end yeah. up for you? Mine's at 300 right now, so 300. Way over. So you're yeah, you're twice as much as me. So what we want to do is we want to make that smaller. And as promised, I thought you know let's let's actually do that. Mm -hmm. There are ping compression tools, free software that you can install on your computer. It's fantastic. Things like Trimage, T-R-I-M-A-G-E, which is compatible with Windows, Linux, and Mac. But they won't do a thing for you. Not tonight. With this particular file, the problem that we run into is that our transparencies have dropped shadows. So there's a lot of data there, right? Because see the grid pattern there? That's all transparent. But then there's a drop shadow around it, so there's an alpha, you know, different uh, blending around the edges. And then there's this big, beautiful photo in the middle that has quite a bit of detail. So in order to get that down in size, compression is just not going to do it for us. Something like trimage, let's give it a go. I'm going to open that software, which is, uh, uh, we'll post a link to download that and install it on your Linux, Windows, or Mac computer uh, in the show notes for episode number 183. So this is Trimage. It's a drag and drop compression system. So my file is 
167.6 kilobits, kilobytes, pardon me. Drag the file over, it says compressing. And in some cases, this may work, especially for JPEG or other lossy formats. Here we are, we've, we've discovered, I think one of the things that we kind of determined last week is that the GIMP tends to compress a little better than Photoshop, mm -hmm. as far as the pings go. We found that the pings were quite a bit smaller on the GIMP. Yeah, without so, losing the quality. Yeah, yeah, and you don't lose any quality because it's lossless. But I did find that, um, with that said, perhaps it's just that the GIMP is already you know, compressing them as, as well as possible. Trimage is done here, and you'll see it was only able to get another 0.4% out of that file. So essentially not enough. That file is now 166.9 kilobytes. So it gave us a little, tiny little bit in this particular scenario. Mm -hmm. On your system, it might do a lot better because it's a 200K file. It might take that 200K file or 300K file and take it down to yeah, but it's this not 166. Do much better than that. Yeah. yeah, but this looks like that's about as small as we can get it. So what we can do is we can reapproach the way that we slice this image. Originally, we said, OK, let's slice it up so that the Polaroid is just this one image. But what we know about uh, image data is if it's black and white, it's, it's a lot smaller. So what we can see from this photo, and it doesn't have to be black and white, I'm keeping in mind I say that, but we know that because there aren't a lot of colors beyond the image itself, we can get this photo a lot smaller if we were to eliminate the photo. So what we can do, let's just see what we can, how, how small we can get this. I'm going to make a box around the photo itself. This is a, a square marquee. I'm going to copy that into my clipboard, control C. Then my background color is white, so I'm going to go edit, fill with background color, and now I just have the Polaroid, but I have that in my clipboard, which I can then, using CSS, reposition over top. So what's going to happen is this is going to become our background, and it looks just like that. So I'm going to save that. And Krista's doing the same over on the Mac. I'm going to save that into the same folder. I'm going to call this Polaroid BG for background. And save that. Save it with uh, compression level 9. Now I'm going to right click and go edit, paste as new image. Pardon me, now I've got that other portion of the, uh, of the image. I'm going to go Image, Auto Crop, and it gets rid of the white area around the edge. Now here's what we're actually accomplishing here. Um, there's Krista getting to that same point with the, with the photo. What's happening is we've effectively cut this image down to a much less intense image as far as how much image data is a part of that image. We've taken it and we've basically created this. It's really just a white image with a border very, very basic image data. Because it has the cool transparencies, it has to be a ping. We need that transparency in order to overlay it on top of other images. But because we have now transferred this over to another image, and this image now doesn't need a transparency, this part, which is what's causing the file to be so large because of the level of image data, can now be saved as a JPEG. So we're going to call this photo one, or photo zero one I usually do, just so I can always add more photos and add a rotation or something down the road. I'm going to call that a JPEG. JPEG, of course, is a lossy file format. It's going to compress the image down to a very small file. I'm going to export in the GIMP. Um, you're going to want to, in Photoshop, do a file save for web, and that's going to give us the smaller size JPEG. Back in the GIMP, I'm going to keep it at about 85% quality because I want it to be really good. And I'm going to save that. Uh, at this point, we've uh, now taken that image and sliced it up a little bit further. How are things looking on the Mac? Oh, they look great on the Mac. In the file size. Oh, well. <laughs> are, you, are you ready for I'll tell you what it is on, on Linux. OK. Just based on what we covered just before the break there, uh, before uh, we did the news, 166.9 kilobytes is how large that file was. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my new Polaroid background and the new photo. 
and you'll see that both of those are now selected and the file size at the bottom 27.4 kilobytes right click see I've got both of those photos highlighted right click properties two files 27.4 K which is much more acceptable for the web how's that look on the Mac um, a little higher yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my Polaroid, just the picture is 147 kilobytes, oh, which okay. I could actually That's go in and reduce. Um, okay. But the background is 70 kilobytes. The background went down to 70. From, yeah, the whole thing together before was 299. Versus, uh, versus on the GIMP, where just the background is 7.1 kilobytes. So there is a substantial difference as far as Photoshop saving files and the GIMP saving files mm -hmm. as far as um, file size go. You'll find that if you go file, save for web, uh, or in your case with uh, CS4, CS5, save for web uh, and devices, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's called, yeah. um, that will greatly uh, decrease the file size. So what we're going to do is that's the way we're going to do it. I'm going to delete that original 166 kilobyte file because we no longer need it. And there we are. So our entire website so far, all those images, as they are, are only 81.6 kilobytes. It is indeed, even though we, we live in a world where high speed is, is pretty much prom, prominent, it's very important to think about the speed of your websites and how quickly they load. It's very, very easy to fall into, oh, it's 166 kilobytes, just that's fine. That'll take one second to download. No big deal, mm -hmm. right? It all adds up. It's easy to fall into that, but you're right, it adds up because then the customer says, well, I also want a photo gallery. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now the website is 600 kilobytes. Now it's all of a sudden two kilobytes on one page load, or two megabytes, I mean, uh, on one page load, and that is just excessive. And it can, one, it causes uh, you to be using a lot of bandwidth unnecessarily uh, as far as the server goes. Um, two, it can cause um, people's browsers to cache things in such a way that um, you don't, uh, if you make changes to files, they may not see those changes. Um, without having to re-download the website. So it can cause all kinds of issues, but really it's about uh, having super, super speedy websites. That's what we're all going for. And uh, so let's take it to the next level. I've got this index.php, which again, I've downloaded from cat5.tv slash web dev. I'm going to open that file. Uh, for me on Linux, I'm going to open it just by clicking on display. That's going to bring it up in gedit. First thing I want to do, because this is the first time I've ever edited PHP files on my gedit, I'm going to go view, highlight mode, scripts, PHP. It's already selected in my case. There we go. And now let's configure gedit for PHP development. Go into edit, preferences. This is on Linux. Make sure enable text wrapping is disabled. You don't want your lines to be split. Display line numbers. By default, they may be off. By turning them on, it gives you a reference point on the left-hand column there. Highlight current line. Some people may like that. Where your cursor is gets highlighted. I personally don't. Display right margin. Don't need that. Highlight matching bracket. That, by default, is turned off, I believe. It's a brilliant feature, which basically is going to allow you to do things like in PHP, now you'll see if I click on this bracket here, the end bracket is highlighted so that I know that that's the bracket. Because what happens when you get into nested if statements, nested um, for each loops and things like that, which you'll learn about, um, is that it can be hard to keep track of. Um, which is your opening and closing bra uh, brace. And also that's where indentation comes in. Indentation meaning the way that I've structured the file so that the title is a part of the head element. And so therefore it's indented. Sometimes I'll indent things just for the sake of se uh, separating it out. Logically there's no reason that the JavaScript should be indented from the head. However, it makes it stand out as this is strictly the JavaScript, and there's the end of the script there. So then the head ends, and the body begins. In the body, again, we're going to indent 
two spaces or whatever. Indentation, like um, being able to highlight our uh, our braces, is is going to allow us to see visually where a site starts, where it ends. This file is set up to load a style c. <coughs> pardon me, style css. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file immediately and save it into that folder and call it style.css. This is our style sheet for the, uh, the file. We're going to start with body. This is the body tag of our website. Background, and we're going to set a color. So we need to get that color. I've set it to black. We need to get that from the GIMP. So bring up our images. We're going to grab that body BG. That was that great big tall thing that we created the other last week. And there it is. We're going to zoom way in. We're going to get... <coughs> pardon me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. We're going to get that very, very bottom color. I'm a trooper, all right? <laughs> I am a trooper. It's funny because it's not happening to me. That's yes. why. Hilarious. <laughs> I should cough a little more in so. your direction. <laughs> and next week we'll see. <laughs> okay, so I've clicked the Doppler tool, selected the bottom color. See how I've scrolled way, way down. Okay. And Krista's following along as well on the Mac, doing the exact same thing in Photoshop. I've got that color. And there it is. 800,000. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. That is the HTML notation, aka hexadecimal reference for that color. So now, if I paste that in, remember that you have to have the pound to specify that this is the hexadecimal color, and then a semicolon to end off the statement. Save that style sheet, go back to my index, and you'll see style.css is actually being loaded by this. So even as it is, let's get connected to our FTP and get this uploaded. And you can see this in real time if you're watching the show live. Head over to demo.cat5.tv. And there's a folder called 001. So now with FileZilla, I'm going to upload my <coughs> images, index, and style.css. Now those are all up on the server. So now if I go to demo.cat5.tv, there's a folder called 001. And you'll notice that the color is that rich ruby red. So now, FileZilla gives us a really cool thing, um, which is to right-click and go view or edit. And that would allow us to edit right, <coughs> right within our browser, or right within um, FileZilla through gedit. So every time you save, it automatically uploads. It's brilliant. In this case, because we've got a local copy, um, we're going to edit locally and then upload every change. Zoom in on our uh, style.css. We're going to go back to our images folder, and we're going to copy the file body.bg. In Linux, that's what we're going to do. In Mac, you're going to have to type images uh, slash. Like, actually type it differently. Because what happens here in, in Linux is when I paste, it actually gives me the file location. So it's really, really handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to append to background. I'm going to go URL like that. Okay, and I'm going to paste in the file reference. I'm going to get rid of the file location so it's relative to the index.php. Relative to means it is right there, slash images, slash body bg, dot jpg. Okay, now we need to tell it how we want it to repeat. We want it to repeat on the horizontal axis because this is that great big tall thing. We want it to loop across the site, but not down. So we've got repeat-x. Of course, repeat-y would be um, vertical. And just leaving it off, we'll make it repeat both. And we're going to go top so that it automatically puts it right at the top and it doesn't center that background image. So now we've told it the background for body. This is our first CSS file ever. So body element, that's basically our website. The background is going to be this image. Okay. It's going to be repeated on the x-axis. It's going to be aligned to the top of the site. And where it extends, where the site extends beyond the image, 
it's going to be that color. So I'm going to save that file. I'm going to upload style.css to my FTP server. Refresh. And you'll see that I have that gradient up at the top of the page that uh, wasn't there before. This is Category 5 TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. And tonight we are coding our very first website. There we go. Okay, so that's our background as it is. And let's take a look at that conf.psd once again, just to refresh our memory as to how this thing is going to be laid out. We've got these elements, our logo, a menu, the uh, wood grain with some text and things floating above it. So pretty simple as far as how we want to position things. We can probably go with absolute positioning, which means the top of the page becomes the positioning anchor for everything that is below that uh, the top. So you'll understand that in a little bit, uh, probably next show. So Aspire logo, we need to find out where we want to put that, but essentially what we're going to do, first of all, so now we're going to create our first div. We're going to call it ID equals wrapper. And that wrapper is going to help us to control uh, elements that are within our website so that they don't fall with that, like they don't go outside of this wrapper. We're going to go back to our style sheet because we've created an ID called wrapper. So we're going to say, And just to test, I'm going to create my wrapper as background black. And we're just going to see what this looks like. Height, 100 picks, width, 100 picks. So it's going to be a, a black square if all goes well. Save both files and re-upload. We're only uploading the files that we've changed. There we go. Now we have our black box. Okay, So that is our first div. It's obviously not what we're going for. We just wanted to test because we're just learning uh, what, it, what it's like to create a div and, and stylize it at a background. One of the things, uh, going back to our edit preferences in gedit, notice I'm just using a text editor. Uh, one of the uh, next things we want to do, enable automatic indentation. Okay, And we can also change the fonts and colors. Usually I work with Oblivion. It's a little bit more hacker-esque. <laughs> so we can do that if we like. For now, we can just use the traditional color scheme. What the automatic indentation does is you'll notice that these ones ended up two spaces back. If I were to have automatic indentation on, I hit Enter, and it's automatically there. See that? Very nice feature of gedit. So there's our wrapper. What we're going to do is we're going to change this. We're going to go height. 500 picks, width, uh, we need to know the width of the actual website, so we're going to go back to our mock-up, the comp, and we're going to grab from, well you know what, the width is actually going to be that wood grain, because the wood grain extends the entire width of mm -hmm. the page, so we want it to match because we don't want to have any elements that are breaking the flow of the website, so I'm going to go back to my images folder here, open my wood grain, You'll see that's 951 pixels. Okay, there's nothing else extending. I'm a little bit silly this way, and Krista knows this about me. 951 pixels. I'm going to actually bring that up in the GIMP, and I'm going to right-click and go Image, Canvas Size, uncheck the um, link here, and change it to 951. I'm actually just going to slice off one pixel, because I'd rather do that than to have a website that's off by one pixel just for the sake of when I copied it, it was off by one pixel. So I'm going to resave that image. I know, I'm silly that <laughs> way. I just like things to be uniform, right? So when I'm typing, it's 950 perfect. pixels. Yep. 950. It's one pixel off. So now <laughs> that image is 950. So we're going to create this website at 950 pixels width. Remember, wrapper is basically going to become our website. The, the frame of our website. I'm going to throw a red border on that just so that we can see if we've been successful. Uploading it again and refreshing, and you can refresh along with us at demo.cat5.tv. 
slash 001. Refresh, and you'll see there is a red border that is 950 pixels even and 500 pixels, uh, 500 pixels high. So that's exactly what we were going for. It's working. So next step is to center the website. We want it to be centered on the page itself. So I'm going to leave the border going because that border is going to help us with something. I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. Go back to our wrapper in the CSS, and we're going to go margin 0 auto. Now that's a little bit advanced. What I'm actually doing there is I'm saying, this is what I'm actually saying, margin left, uh, pardon me, margin left auto, margin right auto, okay? So that's this statement right here. But then the zero represents margin top zero, margin bottom zero. So this statement here is saying the exact same thing as all four lines of these combined. So what I've done is I've streamlined it, made it a lot smaller, and again, that's going to create a smaller CSS file. It's going to be a faster load time for our website, especially when this file gets large. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to save that, zoom out, save, re-upload my site, and go back here and refresh. And you'll see that that box has now become centered within the website. There's an equal amount of space at the left as there is on the right to that red frame. Now, I was talking about leaving this border here because there's something we need to do. We need to get rid of this little bit of space that's there that we have no control over. That little bit of space is being created by the user's browser. So it's not uniform. It's not something that we have actually specified. I'm going to go back to the body element here, and we're going to remove all margins. We're going to remove all padding. That's the body element. So now, because remember, the wrapper is within the body. We learned that when we were looking at uh, indentation. I've uploaded that. Now if I scroll in and refresh, that border is still there, but it's actually very, very close, touching, absolutely touching the frame of the browser. So now next week when we come back, we're going to be looking at actually positioning the elements within that wrapper. We're going to be able to place the logo, and because it's right up to the top, we're going to be able to position that exactly to the mock-up so that everything looks exactly the way Krista intended it uh, to look with the, uh, with the site itself when she presented the mock-up. Perfect. So that's demo.cat5.tv slash 001 in order to take a look at where we're at uh, so far this week. And of course, that will be changing over the, the course of this uh, demonstration and, and this uh, tutorial lesson. Uh, but you can also, <laughs> pardon me, follow along. Um, at uh, cat5.tv slash webdev. We'd love to have you uh, follow along and let us know what you've learned. Cool? I'm going to hop over to the chat room at category5.tv. Only got a couple of minutes left, so just wanted to say hey and see how everyone's doing. If you have any questions for me right off the top, um, happy to answer them for you, um, in particular with regards to the feature. Hey, John. Mathman, <laughs> Cool M, Agamotto, Das Auto, Greg in Texas, nice to see us. Lots of people active in the chat room tonight. Uh, let's see. Cool. Category 5 is a free service. You can get your questions in through the week live at category5.tv. Happy to. Uh, uh, do what we can to help you with your tech woes, or even just uh, provide tutorials or show you how to uh, how to do things. Uh, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, tonight we're using Linux to develop a website, and Krista's over on uh, on the Mac platform. Are you following along with the text uh, aspect of things uh, as well? So far. Yeah. yeah. What uh, what text editor are you using? I uh, just Dreamweaver. Oh, Dreamweaver. Okay, yeah. so Dreamweaver actually is a commercial application, but if, do you still have it up? No. No. Okay. It it does the similar kind of thing, where it's going to uh, colorize, which is very helpful. Sounds all fancy and stuff, but colorization on your file is actually very important. Uh, oh, that's my computer. There we are. <laughs> so there it is on Krista's system. Very very similar as far as how that works. Um, and what we'll do. Um, there are so many different editors that you can use. Uh, whether you're on Windows, Linux, Mac, um, doesn't matter. Um, 
we'll be able to find something for you that is going to give you very similar uh, feature set.